welcome you to Temple Baptist Church. Good to see you on this Wednesday night and beautiful time of the year, beautiful day the Lord's given us. And I love the Wednesday night service. Just gives us our little pick-me-up here in the middle of the week and recharge our batteries and so glad to be in God's house. Let's stand. Ask God to bless our service. I want to welcome those joining us online as well through the Facebook and YouTube and praying the service be a blessing to you also. Let's pray. Father, we do love you. Thank you so much for the privilege to be in the house of God tonight. And we thank you for the midweek service. And Lord, we pray that you would recharge our spiritual batteries, stir those embers of love in our heart. I pray that you'd bless every part of the service for the singing, uh, the King's kids, help the kids as they go next door to memorize and learn the word of God. We pray that you'd use Brother Micah and the others, help him as he preaches the word of God over there. And then, Lord, we pray you bless here. And thank you, Lord, for um, the Bible and that we have a Bible to preach and study and teach from. And I pray that you'd use Brother Nate tonight as he preaches the Word of God. Fill him with the Holy Ghost. And Lord, speak to our hearts, we pray. And Lord, if there's anyone here uh, in our midst or watching online who's lost, I pray that you would take those scales off. Lord, as we talked about on uh, Sunday night, help them open their eyes to see their need to be saved. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn 125 there in your hymnal. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Let's sing it out. Hymn 125, the solid rock. Good singing. You may be seated. And we thank God that we're able to stand on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hushers, if you come forward, is there anyone that did not get a prayer list tonight? If you will raise your hand and if you'll just keep it up there and uh, they, the ushers will get one. Uh, put that in your hand. Do appreciate those who came out yesterday afternoon and last night and helped us with uh, Seed Line. Working on with our John Romans, we're working on uh, the ones that are going to the Cherokee Indians. And so we did 2,295 uh, yesterday and last night. And so thank you for your faithfulness coming out to that. I did fail to mention on Sunday, we just had so many things going on on Sunday with the business meeting. Glad that was unanimous there for Brother Ryan to be here uh, for an intern uh, this summer. Looking forward to that. And just we had a lot of different things going on. But uh, so I failed to give an update uh, last Wednesday. I know we mentioned Brother Morgan um, I did the project there down at Ambassador Baptist College. And uh, do you mind just standing there and just kind of giving us how many you did and what you did?
Amen. So we rejoice in that there as well. Um, God have some visitors with us tonight. Uh, good to have Deidre's folks and then uh, these gentlemen that are in from out of town. Thank you all for being with us tonight. So good to see you in church. Um, do want to, uh, we'll go over the prayer list in a few minutes, but um, I just wanted to mention this for all of our workers with King's Kids and our children so they can pray. We've been praying for Brian Lale's dad, uh, Stephen, um, and this afternoon, I guess maybe 4.30 or so, um, uh, I talked to Brother Stephen, I'm sorry, I talked to Brother Brian uh, Lale uh, earlier in the afternoon, and it was looking like it, his dad was ready um, to pass away. About 4.30 or so, I guess it was, that he passed away. And so if you will pray there for uh, Brian and April and their family at this time. Um, the good news is, <laughs> three weeks ago, I was able to drive down there to Kings Mountain, and I led him to Christ, and so thank God. We know he's with the Lord, and so we just praise God for that. I'm so glad for God's mercy and grace that God allowed him to live long enough to be able to hear the gospel and be able to get saved, and so we praise the Lord for that. Boy, ain't God good to us in so many areas? I mean, he's just always good, but one of the areas in which he is so good, I was just thinking about his timing, and... Um, Leslie, Brian's sister, lives in Washington State. She was here with us on Easter, and, you know, it's not like you can just... So she flew back home, and you know how that is. Then you're trying to fly back, and uh, she was getting ready. Uh, she had... Um, April had driven her to the airport uh, when, when her dad passed away. So we're thankful for God's timing that she was able to... They were just able to turn right back around and get uh, there to uh, be with family instead of flying out to Washington and then having to fly right back. And so, uh, but play, please pray for that family, if you will. We'll go over the prayer list. The other one is uh, Brother Billy and Miss Vanessa, of course, are always here. Brother Billy's dad um, uh, yesterday morning um, really took a, 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 a turn, and um, we're just kind of, Brother Billy and Miss Vanessa are there with him, and we're just kind of waiting, really the last two days we've been waiting as well uh, for his home going. And so, um, so if you'll pray for Brother Billy, I know that was, um, he, you know, he's 86 years of age, but still it, it, it happened very fast. And so I want you to pray for the Snodgrass family as well. Oh, the rest of the week, Saturday, we will go out and tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ at 10 o'clock. So we invite you to come out there. We'll meet at the fellowship hall and then go out, knock on doors and tell people about the Lord. And then Sunday, back here in the Lord's house, we had such a great Sunday last Sunday. Uh, glad that the Longs joined our church and just all that God did. And so let me encourage you, 10 o'clock, let's be faithful in Sunday school. And uh, Sunday morning, remember, we started a new series on the parables of Jesus Christ and uh, last week we did the Good Samaritan, and uh, this Wednesday night, I'm sorry, this uh, Sunday morning, uh, we're going to do the one where the neighbor comes and keeps knocking at the door, keeps knocking at the door, keeps knocking at the door, and uh, what does that mean? It's importunity about prayer, so that'll be Sunday morning at 11, and then Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Teenagers, please don't forget, youth activity on this Saturday, and uh, that is for 7th grade to 10th uh, through our 12th grade, 5 o'clock. And we'll have our picture scavenger hunt. Food will be provided. And so that'll be this Saturday. If you have questions, see Brother Micah. A ladies' meeting will be May 4th. And so all ladies are invited to that. That's uh, our young ladies and our adult ladies. And if you like to decorate a table, if you'll see my wife, uh, we need some ladies still to help us with that, I believe, right? And so if you'll see my wife, you like to decorate one of those tables according to the theme, and uh, that'll be May 4th, the ladies' meeting. You no, know, that'll be a good time of fellowship and refreshments. And then you Sunday will be May 5th. We'll have a teen takeover. Turn it over to teens and looking forward to that. And then Mother's Day on May the 12th and a special day that day. Honoring moms, we'll have a photo booth there for all the families to be able to take pictures um, as well. Brother Mike is going to come with our missionary letter tonight. And it's from the Barrett family. There are missionaries to Brazil. They were with us last March in our missions conference. And uh, praise the Lord, they have raised all their support. They're at 100%. And uh, but remember now she's trying to get she's from Brazil, but she's trying to get um, her immigration passport here to America where they can't come back and forth. And so it's just taken a while. So we need that's a special prayer request. They need that before they can go back down to Brazil. This is dear, precious supporters and friends. We are happy to announce that we have reached 100 percent of our our support level. We are thrilled that the Lord has allowed us to reach it by April of 2024. We initially set our date to finish deputation by August of this year. However, the Lord opened doors even sooner than we expected in our deputation ministry. We reached our planned support level in one year and eight months. 
If you have not partnered with us yet and are still considering partnering financially, we plan to use any extra support to be invested in the church planning ministry to pay for material, rent, or building expenses, salaries for national pastors, amongst other needs. <clears throat> the desire of our hearts was to leave for Brazil this month of April. We are still waiting for Alini's documentation to be approved for us to travel. I talked to the immigration lawyer who was helping us, and he said that it could be approved any day now to a few months. We have also requested a petition to travel. If approved, we could leave the country while our case is being reviewed. We even tried to request an advanced parole to visit her 93-year-old grandmother who is on, uh, on special care and would allow us to stay in Brazil for longer. However, the immigration services would not grant emergency leave for that. We were disappointed that they did not grant permission to travel yet, but understood that God is in control. One verse we have been reflecting on these days is Proverbs 16:9. A man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directeth his steps. We must trust that he will open this door in his perfect timing. Our hearts are aching to return to Brazil, and other than this documentation we are waiting on, we are ready to go and have packed most of our things. We even had our farewell slash, com slash commissioning service at our home church, the Knoxville Baptist Tabernacle, this last Sunday. Please continue praying with us about this, that we may be allowed to leave as soon as possible. We've been very busy these last couple of months. We were in conferences and meetings in uh, Indiana, New Jersey, Ohio, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. Praise the Lord, we were able to see souls saved during these visits. We had seven children come forward to get saved in our last meeting in chapel and junior church. Also, one of the conferences in Indiana, a man, a man came forward to get saved at the end of the service. He told the assistant pastor that the songs we sang as a family, uh, a family special, touched his heart and he wanted to get saved. We are so happy God used us to speak to this man's heart. He even emailed me thanking us and letting us know that he had gotten saved. We received word that he got baptized a couple of weeks ago, and we consider it a privilege to be used by the Lord as ambassadors for world missions and a witness to others. Thank you so very much for your faithfulness and support and prayers. We consider it a great privilege to be partnered with you as your missionaries rep to represent you in Brazil. We love you and always thank the Lord for you. In Christian love, David, Alini, Ben, and Gabe Barrett. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Let's pray for the Barrett family. Hymn 41 there in your hymnal in the sweet by and by. Man, looking forward to that day. How many of you, well, you can stand first. How many have someone over on the other shore? <laughs> Aren't you looking forward to seeing them in the sweet by and by? And heaven gets sweeter all the time, doesn't it? Let's think about the words and sing them as Brother David leads us.
missing, and you may be seated, and that is not a figment of our imagination or something that a Baptist pastor concocted. That's the Bible. <laughs> We're going to meet over on that beautiful shore. Brother Mike, if you'll come along and uh, come over, and all the workers there for King's Kids, and all the boys and girls, you may go next door for King's Kids, and hope you have a great night tonight. <laughs> We get our entertainment just watching them leave, don't we? <laughs> Very good. Good to see all those boys and girls in church. If you get out a pen or pencil, we will add some names to the list here tonight. Um, and we're praying tonight for our senior citizens ministry, senior saints, and we thank the Lord for them, all of those that um, are in that category. Our staff member of the week, Brother Micah and his family, and uh, we thank God for Micah and Charity, and so please pray for them. And uh, Deacon Family of the Week, <clears throat> we already had this even before uh, we just we rotate them out. But um, this is uh, especially for this week, Brother Billy and Miss Vanessa. Again, we miss them over here. Um, and so please pray for them. They're over in Tennessee. And uh, again, his dad is, uh, uh, it just seems like any minute, ready to go to be with the Lord. His dad is saved, and so we're thankful for that. And so please pray for Billy and Vanessa at this time. The Missionary Family of the Week, the Barrett family, they're in Brazil. And so please pray for the Barretts. And uh, then the church members of the week, the Jacksons, they're out of town. But we thank God for Jerry and Carol Jackson. They are such a blessing to our church. And we love those guys and thank God for them. On the back then, uh, health needs, we want to continue to pray. They're on the left column for Neha Meister. And remember Miss Sunshine as well. And uh, then on the right side there, uh, about fifth name down, Bill Snodgrass. That's Brother Billy's dad. And so please pray for uh, continue to pray for him. Um, maybe halfway down on the right column, the Northrops. And uh, so Mrs. Joyce got home last night. And uh, so please pray for, for them. Um, I talked to her today and to uh, uh, Brother David, and uh, they, uh, just, uh, they just need our prayers. And so please pray there for them, if you will. Um, some challenges there. Um, and then if you will, they're under health needs or, or bereavement. We already mentioned uh, Stephen Lale family. Please pray for that family. Brian uh, and April, Brian's dad. And so please pray, Lale family, L-A-I-L. And uh, let's remember them in prayer again. We thank God that Stephen got saved a few weeks ago and he's with the Lord. And so we praise the Lord for that. Uh, uh, praise, um, I try to keep you up to date on this because different ones have asked. You know, my Uncle Ron Bixler's a faithful Baptist pastor for many, many years. And um, 19, I think it was 97, he was going to make a visit. Uh, he was pastoring in Memphis at that time, Tennessee, and, or that area, and was going to make a visit. And uh, a vehicle came across the lines and, and hit him. And really, he's pastored ever since then, but has had a lot of challenges, a lot of surgeries. And uh, his one foot is... Um, his one leg's a little shorter, and so there's just been a lot of challenges through time um, that from that that have come up, and, and he lost the one um, foot, and uh, but anyways, we've been praying. He had that surgery, that procedure, trying to keep the other one. He texted me um, this week and said, um, said, just praise God. He said the vascular surgeon thinks that everything is going really, really well, and so we just thank the Lord for that. So he wanted me. He said, I know your church has been praying for me for a long time. We've taken up some love offerings for him and stuff, and so he wanted me to tell you thank you for praying, and so that's a good praise report there. How many like praise reports? <laughs> I like prayer requests, but I like praise reports too. And so uh, thank God for that. Uh, salvations there. Those are people that are related or connected to someone in our church. Uh, most of these live out of town. And so please pray for these. Um, by the way, Brian, I was talking to Brian today, Brian Lale. And uh, he said that he had been praying for his dad. He thinks it was between 20 to 30 years he was praying for his dad's soul. Now think about that. 20 to 30 years. How many of you have a lost loved one? All right. We can't give up praying, can we? We cannot give up praying. That's my sermon on Sunday morning. Just we got to keep knocking and knocking and knocking, keep praying. But he said he thought between 20 and 30 years he had prayed for his dad's salvation. And there his dad gets saved, you know, three weeks before he dies. And so uh, God answered that prayer. And so we thank the Lord for that. So let's continue to pray. See these other objects, Aaron Bayshore, Bean Family, our president, our leaders, Mike Ankrum II, 
Amber Wyke, Randy Wetzel, and Kendra Hope. How many of you have an unspoken request on your heart? And uh, let's remember all those objects in prayer. Our way of doing this is to have a time of prayer. And so if you want to pray there with uh, your spouse or family member, someone next to you, um, I know some people get shy, you know, and just pray, pray by themselves. That's fine, too. If you want to whisper prayer, if you want to pray out loud, that's what I do. Uh, whatever you, but let's just make God's house a house of prayer uh, here. And I'll come back in a few minutes and close our time in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do love you. Thank you so much that we have the access to come into the throne of grace and you invite us to come and to come boldly that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And Lord, we have some needs tonight. We thank you that we're able to bring these petitions to you. And uh, Father, we do pray for the Leo family at this time. Thank you for answering our prayer. Thank you for saving Stephen's soul before it was eternally too late. But Lord, I pray for his, uh, for his wife. I pray for Brian and Leslie and uh, for Brian's family, that you'd comfort them at this time. And uh, Lord, I, I know their hearts are, are broken, they're shattered, and I pray that you'd mend those broken hearts and that you'd bring comfort. I pray that you'd pour that sweet balm of Gilead, that the Holy Spirit of God would comfort and give them grace and strength in this hour. Lord, we pray that you'd use it for the honor and glory of God, for other lost loved ones to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for uh, the testimony of Brian praying, and Lord, help us not to give up praying for our loved ones to be saved. Lord, we think of the Snodgrass family right now, and Billy and Vanessa, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, they are such faithful members and a huge, huge part of our church, and we thank you for them, and just pray that you'd help Brother Billy and his family at this time, and help his dad, help his mom, Lord, and especially the situation's difficult with his mom's dementia and not understanding things, and and Father, we pray, Lord, we know that our times are in your hands, and so we just pray that you'd call uh, Brother Billy's dad home to be with you and your timing. We just give that to you, and uh, Lord, we, we would prefer for the rapture to take place and you to call us all out. But uh, Lord, if not, that you'll give them the grace that they need in this hour. Lord, we do pray for the Barretts and we pray for Alini to be able to get this paperwork that she needs to be able to so they can get back. Thank you for them getting their support raised in, in a year and eight months. And Lord, I pray now that they be able to get to Brazil and be able to preach the gospel and plant churches and see souls saved and lives changed there. Thank you for the Jacksons. I pray that you'd help Jerry and Carol. Please protect them. Keep them safe and healthy. We pray for some of our folks who are uh, battling sinus infections and some other uh, allergies. I pray that you'd bring healing there. We think of uh, all of our senior saints, Lord, and pray that you'd uh, just help each one of them. We thank you for them. Lord, my mind tonight prays specific, or thinks specifically of David and Joyce, and, and they need your grace and your strength in this hour. And Father, you know that need, and, and uh, I lift them to thee and ask that you would please help them both uh, even tonight. We pray, Lord, for, uh, for Nahum and, Lord, uh, the challenges there that he faces. I pray keep him healthy day by day, help his growth, help his development, help his 
uh, just comprehension and being able to communicate uh, what he needs. I pray that you'd help Todd and Sunshine, give them strength day by day as they care for him, help his uh, surgery that'll be upcoming. And Lord, we just pray that you'd help their family. Think of Miss Sunshine right now and that you would just uh, bring healing and strength uh, to her and help with just that uh, the fatigue um, from the procedure. And Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen her as well. Lord, I, I want to praise you, O oh God, tonight for uh, answering prayer with my Uncle Ron and that uh, this, uh, Lord, they, they didn't know if it'd work, but we thank you that it has, and we just praise you for that. And Lord, I know he, he wants to keep on preaching as long as he can, and I pray that you'd help him to be able to do so physically. We pray for the other health needs, Lord. We think of, oh, so many of these, Lord, Judy Wallace with her surgery for cancer and many others on there. Lord, each and every name that you would help them and heal them in accordance to your will. We pray for these names on here that are lost. Father, wherever they may be around this world right now, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would grip their hearts and that they would see their need to be saved. And Lord, even as I preached on Sunday morning about the Good Samaritan, that uh, Lord, that you would bring someone by their path, a, a Good Samaritan who could tell them about the Great Samaritan, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help these unspoken requests, we pray on the prayer list and those that were expressed by a raised hand. And then Lord, tonight as Brother Nate preaches, Lord, we're excited to hear what you have to say to us. I Again, fill them with the Spirit of God. And Lord, speak to me and each one of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, aren't you glad God hears and answers prayer? I sure am. And uh, we see it day after day after day, how the Lord answers our prayers. And we're thankful for that. Thankful for the love of God. I mentioned in our Sunday school class on last Sunday that, you know, God's love is so amazing that even if you don't love God, He still loves you, doesn't He? And uh, J. Vernon McGee uh, used an illustration and said it this way, that, uh, that if, if you put a, uh, an umbrella over your head to keep the rain from coming on you, it doesn't stop. It keeps the rain from coming on you, but it doesn't stop it from raining outside. And even if you don't love God, if you cover up God's love with unbelief or with not, I don't believe God, I don't believe, I don't love God. If you cover it up with an umbrella, you can't still stop God's love from raining down on you. He just constantly loves us. And I'm so thankful for that. I know, um, oh, this is over here. I thought, man, that girl's playing hooky from church after she turned 16 years of age. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. I, we just want to say thank you. I should have her do it. Do you want to do it? Come on up here. I'll put her on the spot. Now she starts preaching. I'm going to stop her there. <laughs> thank you so much for everything you guys gave me. I was just opening on Sunday. I felt overwhelmed by just the blessings that we have. And I'm just so thankful for this church and everything they've done for us. So thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for all the cards and all the, man, flowers and balloons and different things people gave her for her 16th birthday. And uh, Monday's my day off, so we had a good family day together and just uh, had a, a good time. Just a really, really good time being together there. So, But thank you uh, very much for that. Let me encourage you to be faithful with your uh, giving. Our Wednesday night offering goes to our John and Romans. I think everyone knows this, but I just try to remind us from time to time. Last night, we did 2,295 John Romans, and those are Cherokee and going to them. We never charge a penny, not one time, for all the millions of John Romans we've ever done. Because we want to give them to free to the missionaries, where they can pass them out, obviously, free to people, so they can read the Bible and get saved. But how many know nothing's really free? <laughs> So that's where we have our Wednesday night offering, and, and we're just thankful how God meets the needs. So that's what the offering goes. You can put it in the offering plate or in one of the giving boxes, and Alyssa's going to play the offertory.
Amen. Holy, holy, holy. Is so we're excited about that. Glad to have these students from the, the young men from Ambassador Baptist College. And so uh, each semester we, we have one of them. Last semester, Brother Luke preached and uh, Brother Ryan the semester before that and uh, Brother Nate this semester. And then we'll have to get Brother Evan and Brother Jason uh, as well. But we're looking forward to Brother Nate. Nate's not with us as much as those other guys on Sundays because he's out uh, traveling and singing a lot and uh, just uh, with the ensemble. But he is from Wild West Virginia. We can get two amens right there. All right, Ryan and Jason. Country roads, right? And then something like that. There, country roads. Heathen road. No, I mean, <laughs> but uh, Brother Nate, we love you and thank God for you. And so he's going to come and preach. So allow God to speak to your heart. Make sure this thing's on here. Well, good evening, everybody. If you will take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of First Timothy, chapter number one. It's 1 Timothy chapter number 1. And I do want to say thank you so much to this church for all you mean to me. For You all are such a blessing. Um, you know, we talk about it all the time as you know, we're driving up here and driving back um, to the campus. And you know, This is such a special church, and we really appreciate it. And I want to thank Pastor for the opportunity to preach tonight, and I pray that it'll be a blessing. Amen. So the book of 1 Timothy chapter number 1, if in verse number 5, if you would stand for the reading of God's word, we're going to read verse 5, and it says, Now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart, and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned. I want to talk to you this evening about the end of the commandment. Let's pray. Dear Father God, I thank you so much for this day, and Lord, I, I pray that you would fill me with your spirit now and empty me of self. Lord God, I pray that you would do a work in the hearts of each and every person here tonight. And please bless Brother Micah over there um, in the other building. I just speak through him as well. Dear God, I just pray for this service that your presence would be here among us. And all this I pray in Jesus' name and amen. amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. So the end of the commandment. Now what does that mean? It says the end of the commandment is charity. That end of the commandment, it, it basically means the sum of all the commandments. That's, that's kind of the, essentially what it's talking about. If you remember in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, there was a certain lawyer, and he came up to Jesus, and the Bible says that he was tempting him, but he said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And so that's, that's essentially what this verse is talking about, the end of the commandment. I didn't read, or I didn't quote that last part. It said, Jesus said, on these two things hang all the law and the prophets. That on love, love God, love others. On that, that's what the rest of the commandments in the Bible hang off of. If we are loving as we ought to, that essentially takes care of everything else. So if we love God, we're not going to want to sin. We're not going to want to do wrong. If we love others, we're not going to want to wrong them. The, the whole book, the whole law is summed up in love. Love God and love others. You know that word, it says charity, that's talking about love. The, word, the Greek word used there is agape. That is the strongest, form, the strongest word for love in the Bible, in the New Testament. And you know, it basically is, has the idea of a sacrificial love, giving yourself. When God, in John 3, 16, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. That word is a verb form of, of it's the verb form of agape. It's the, it's the greatest love you could have. It is giving of yourself and expecting nothing in return. But in this passage, this passage, there's this, this verse here, it gives us three things that are necessary for us to have that kind of love, for us to have that agape love, for us to fulfill the greatest commandments. We have to have these three things. So we're, we're going to look at those tonight. The first of them, the first one is a pure heart. A pure heart. You know, there's... 
a major lack of purity in this world today. You know, it, it's sad when you look around, you see immorality all around you. And it's, it's so sad, but God is pure. And he wants us to be pure. Now, what, what is purity? It is essentially the idea to be clean, to be innocent, guiltless. That is essentially what purity is. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 24, verses 3 through 4, it says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. That's a sin. What that's saying is those who are in the presence of the Lord, those who, it says who can go in the presence of the Lord. It's those with a pure heart, those with clean hands. Those are the ones. If you want to get into the presence of the Lord, that is correct. It's salvation. You have to have a pure heart. And we're going to talk about salvation in a second. But how do we become pure? How do we have that? You know, we talk about it, but how does that, how does that happen? Well, I want to point out we can't become pure on our own. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Our heart, our heart is wicked. There is nothing good about our hearts. Proverbs 9, 10 says, Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. And the answer to that question is none of us. None of us can make our own hearts clean. It says in, later in Proverbs, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There's a generation that is pure in their own eyes. And I think that's many people in this world today. They think themselves pure. You know, that they go out and do all these great works and you, know, you look at all these false religions out there. They're doing all these great works, even better than some of us Baptists do. But in the end, they're not pure because their good works cannot make them pure. You know, it's, it's like a glass of water. You know, they've, they've got this cup of water up here for me. I'm very appreciative of, of, of that. But you know, it's like this glass of water here. If you were, you know, this right here, is, it's good, clean water. It's fresh. We could say it's pure. If you were to go out onto a field, you know, I, I live out in the country, and right across the road from where I live, there's a cow pasture. Well, if you were to go out there, you're going to see what we call cow pies. And if you were to take just a little bit of that and put it in, put it in this cup of water, I don't know about you, but I would not want to drink that. That would not be good. And that's a lot how our lives are. Just that little bit of sin. That is enough to defile us, to make us, to make us undesirable. We don't want that anymore. We, don't, we, do, we should not be defiled. But we need to be pure. So we cannot be pure on our own. Someone once said, living the Christian life is not hard. It's impossible. We cannot live the Christian life on our own, on our own strength, on our own goodness. We have to rely on Almighty God. Amen. So purity, we can't do it on our own. We have to rely on God. See, it's impossible for us to become pure on our own, but what's impossible for man is possible with God. We serve the God of the impossible. Amen. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, he said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, purity, purity is not, I don't believe it's necessarily talking about salvation. But you cannot be pure without first being saved. You see, sin is what defiles us. That is what makes us unpure. And if, until you get saved, you are living in sin. You have that sin nature. And you, you cannot become pure on our own. We already established that. So you cannot be pure if you're unsaved. So you have to get saved you know, this verse says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. What do you believe? Well, you believe that Jesus came down to this earth, that he died on the cross to pay for that sin that you could not pay for. He became sin. Who knew no sin? So that we could be made the righteousness in him. Amen. He became pure for us. He became sin for us, rather, so that we could be pure. 
Psalm 51.10. This is David. This is after he had sinned with Bathsheba. And this is his psalm of repentance, his psalm of confession to God. He said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. See, David, he had sinned. He had done a great sin. He had cr- committed an immoral act with Bathsheba. This was wrong. It was dead wrong. But, you know, when he finally got right, he knew where to turn. He knew that he was not pure, and he knew he had to get it right. You know what he did? He didn't try to do a bunch of good works. He turned to God. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God. He knew that it was only God who could create that clean heart. So you, you cannot love as you should if you do not have a pure heart, if you do not have a clean heart. You can't love God as you should. You can't love others as you should if you don't have that pure heart. But next we see, we see a good conscience. The verse says, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience. Now this conscience, it's, a conscience is so very important. It's not, we should not be like, you know, Disney, remember Jiminy Cricket? I grew up watching all those old movies and stuff and, you remember Jiminy Cricket? He said, let your conscience be your guide. That is false. That is not good at all. Your conscience, remember we already established the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You should not let your conscience be your guide. You need to let God be your guide. Amen. But you know, this conscience, it's talking about when something's weighing on you. When you know, for, it can talk about when someone else did something to you. you know, I'm from West Virginia. Pastor already you know, said something about that. And in West Virginia, back in the old days, there was something we had. We call it feuds. You know, one family feuding against another family. And I'm sure you all had that down here, too. It seems to be something about country culture and mountain culture. I'm not sure what it is. But, you know, we had those feuds. And, you know, we don't really have those that I hear of anymore. <laughs> and thank the Lord for that. But nevertheless, we do have lots of bitterness. You know, especially there in West Virginia where I'm from, people hold grudges for years. It's, and it's over the smallest little things. And that's the way so many of us are. Somebody does us some little hurt. Somebody takes, us, takes our seat in church, and we get this bitterness rising up in us, this grudge, and like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. And we let it grow and grow, and it ends up destroying us. It ruins, it ruins church for us. It's not right. Bitterness is a deadly poison which will destroy us and destroy those around us as well. So we can't, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. And let me tell you, bitterness is not to the glory of God. Bitterness is the exact opposite. God hates bitterness. So we can, we can um, be bitter, against things that other people have done to us. But what about the other side? Things we've done to other people. Those things can weigh on our conscience as well. You know, when I was, I was probably about 11 years old, and I was in Sunday school class, and we had this competition. We had this competition one Sunday, and we were going to see who could read the most chapters of the Bible in one week. My Sunday school teacher was the one who organized it all, and it was just going to be a fun little competition. And Well, my brother... My older brother was in that class. He was better at everything than I was. I could not beat him at anything. You know, some of you all with older siblings, you probably understand that. But you know, I, I just got frustrated at it sometimes. So I was determined I was going to beat my brother in this competition. You know, I was going to read more Bible chapters than he was. You know, maybe it wasn't the right motive, but <laughs> I was going to do it anyway. Um, anyway, at the end of the week, that, that next Sunday... You know, he, he told how many chapters he had said, and my number didn't quite, didn't quite match his. And I'm ashamed to say I lied, and I said that I had told more chapters than I did. I said, hey, I've, I've told this many chapters, and, or I've read this many chapters, and you know, I lied about it. And yeah, I ended up winning the competition. I beat my brother, not, not honestly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, after that, you know, when it was all said and done, the Sunday school teacher, he came and um, for a prize, there was a $20 prize. I knew nothing about that prize until the day of. And, but he handed me $20 for winning the contest. 
I knew it was wrong to accept that $20. I knew what I had done, and, but I took it anyway. I, I didn't want to <laughs> own up to my mistake, and I took it. That weighed on my conscience immensely. Seven years later, and I still hadn't confessed that sin. And it, it popped up so many times. Anytime I would see that Sunday school teacher, it would pop up, and it ended up hindering my relationship with him because I was afraid to go talk with him because I was afraid he might find out. And you know, it goes back, you can't love others if you have something on your conscience that you've done to them. So you need to make that right. Seven years I had that. And it wasn't until shortly before I came to college that finally the Lord, the Lord just kind of made it plain. It's like, hey, you've been called to preach. If you don't get this right, this will hinder your future ministry. There, and if you need to get this right before you go to college. Otherwise, you may never get a second chance at it. And that kind of got my attention a little bit. So I started looking for an opportunity to you know, go to that Sunday school teacher and confess. The Lord gave me several opportunities. I didn't take them all, unfortunately. But finally, one day, I did. And when I, when I told him what I had done, I confessed it to him. I tell you, there was such a weight lifted off my shoulders. It was, it was incredible. You need to have a clear conscience. It is so important. If you have something weighing on your conscience, maybe you've done, it, maybe you've done something to somebody else. Maybe somebody else has done something to you. Just confess it. Get rid of the bitterness. Get rid of, get rid of whatever is holding you back from that. Have a clear conscience. Paul said in Acts, he said, And herein do I exercise myself. That exercise, that, that implies work. But he said, It takes work to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. A conscience void of offense. That means that your God can't say anything against you because your conscience is clean before God. There's nothing between you and the Savior. And there's nothing between you and your fellow men. Nothing that's hindering those relationships. Again, we're commanded to love each other. We're commanded. That's the greatest commandment God gave. Love God and love your neighbor. And if you have something weighing on your conscience, you can't do that as you should. So have a clean conscience. And then lastly, I want to point out Faith unfeigned. It says, now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. That word unfeigned, well, the word feigned, it has the idea, idea to pretend, to you know, put on a show, to fake something. That's what that word feigned is. So unfeigned, that's the opposite of that, to be real, to be genuine. You know, many... You know, there, there's an excuse I've heard many times from people. They say, I, I don't want to go to church because of all the hypocrites in church. Well, it's true. There are hypocrites in church. I was one of them for many years in my family. My, my father, he's a pastor and has been for many years. But just because he's a pastor doesn't mean I lived like I should have, you know, as a pastor's kid. I, there was a period in my life where I rebelled against God you know, not openly. I was, I was the good kid at church. You know, I knew how to walk the walk. I knew how to talk the talk. I was, I was known as the good kid, but in my private life, I was not. And you know what? I knew it, and God knew it. I did not have that faith like I should have. My faith was feigned, as the Bible would put it. We need to have faith that's unfeigned, faith that's real, faith that is genuine. You know, there was, a, there was an older woman, and she lived in the mountains, you know, mountains much like this, and this was back in the old days, and she did not have a vehicle. She did not have an automobile to drive to church. She was very faithful to church, though, and she had to walk to church every Sunday and every Wednesday just to get to church. And, well, if the church is right over here and that woman's house is right over here, from her house to the church, it's only about a mile's distance. So the walk wasn't horrible. However, the problem was there's a big old mountain right there in the middle. And she couldn't get just, she couldn't go in a straight line that straight mile. She had to go five miles all the way around that mountain just to get to church. She walked there every Sunday, every Wednesday. You know, one day she was in church 
and the pastor was preaching. And he was preaching about mountain moving faith, about if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And I'll tell you, that woman, she got all excited and she went home and she was going to pray to God. And she, she prayed and she said, Lord, would you, would you move that mountain in between me and church so I don't have to walk all the way around it anymore? I can just walk straight to church and it'll just, it'll be so much nicer. And so she, she went to bed that night and um, the next morning she woke up the mountain was still there. And the first words out of her mouth were, I thought so. I thought God wouldn't come through. I thought he wouldn't answer my prayer. And that's how, uh, that's much like us many times. We pray, we say we have faith. We say we have faith. You know, we, we, we tell each other all the time, hey, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for you. But how often do we actually pray for each other? And how many times is it just an empty prayer? We don't truly believe that God's going to answer those prayers. Someone once put it this way. You can tell who you're trusting by how much you're praying. I'll say that again. You can tell who you're trusting. Are you trusting in God? You can tell who you're trusting by how much you are praying. So many times we don't pray as much as we ought to. James said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Ask in faith. Faith is so very important. But faith not only in praying, but faith in witnessing. You know, they go out every Saturday, and they, they go door to door, and they, you know, they try to lead people to the Lord. It's, and that is a great thing. That is a wonderful thing. But I know in my own life, and I think in the lives of many others, we do it almost more out of habit than out of expectancy. We don't expect God to work. Why is that? God wants to do great things, but we don't have the faith that he's going to. You know, we hear about all these revivals back in the old days and the great things God did. Why can't he do that today? Because so many people in the church house don't have faith. They're not praying in faith. They're not witnessing in faith. They're not telling others because half the time they don't, have, they don't have that belief themselves. They're not trusting God like they should. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That leaves nothing out. All thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't trust yourself. Trust God. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. That's a promise from God. Amen. He shall direct thy paths if you'll ask him, if you'll trust him. But so often, that's, you know, my, my father, like I said, he's a pastor. One, of the, one thing he has said many, many times, and I found it to be true in my own life, two of the hardest things to do in the Christian life are to trust and obey. You know, it's so simple, and yet we struggle with it so much. Just trusting God and then when he gives us that answer, when he tells us what we should do, so often we don't even obey that. We're like, Lord, I can't do that. I can't go tell that person about Jesus. What will people think? What will he think? <coughs> Who cares what they think? They need Jesus. Amen. They need the gospel. Amen. They, need, they need to know that if they don't get saved, they're on their way to hell. And if you don't tell them, Who will? Without that faith, how can we say that we're loving others? How can we say that we're loving God without that faith in our lives? That, that action of witnessing, that action of telling others about Jesus, that is faith in motion. That is faith demonstrated. We need to have that faith. We need to love. And that love is shown by a pure heart, by, by a good conscience, and by faith unfeigned. So that's my question. Do you have that pure heart? Or is there some kind of sin in your life that's holding you back? Is there anything down deep inside that you've never told anyone else but you know about it and God knows about it? Confess it. It's not worth holding it in. Right. Again, remember the water. Would you, drink, would you drink that water if it had cow manure in it? I know I wouldn't. God doesn't want it either. 
He wants a pure heart. Amen. And then a good conscience. Is there bitterness in your heart? Is there a grudge you've been holding for years against someone? Make it right. It's not worth it. You end up hurting yourself and those around you because of your own bitterness. It's not worth it. And maybe you've done something to wrong someone else and it's been weighing on you. Confess it. Confess it. And then, are you pretending to have faith? In the Bible, G Jesus talked a good bit about the Pharisees. And you know, he said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. And he, he was very severe with those hypocrites, with those Pharisees. God hates hypocrisy. Amen. Don't pretend. Don't pretend like you have faith, like you're, this, like you're some spiritual person. We are nothing without God, each and every one of us. It's all his work in us and through us. It's nothing we do ourselves. You know, I, I think back to John. or Yeah, it's in the book of John. And it's when the disciples are on the Sea of Galilee. And they see Jesus. He's walking on water. And, and you know, they think he's a spirit. But then, you know, he says, be not afraid, it is I. And I don't remember the, all the exact words. I'm butchering it a little bit. But... It, Peter, he says, Lord, if it's thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And Jesus says one word. He says, come. You know what Peter did? He went. He believed. He trusted God. He had that faith. You know what? Who was holding up Peter on the water? It wasn't Peter. He couldn't. He couldn't walk on the water on his own. It was God. It was Jesus who was holding him up on that water. But that never would have happened if Peter had not taken that first step out of the boat and gotten on the water. We need to take that first step of faith in our lives. So those are my questions. A pure heart, a good, con or a good conscience, and faith unfeigned. Let's bow in prayer. Dear Father God, I thank you so much for this day. Lord, I thank you for what you've done this evening, and I pray that you would continue to do a great work in the hearts of everyone here, including myself, Lord. I pray that you would bless this invitation. <coughs> Lord, if you've spoken to someone's heart today about something they need to get right, I pray that they would make it right. Lord, I, I know for myself, Lord, I, I need more faith. Lord, please grow my faith and grow the faith of those here, Lord. We want to see a great revival. Lord, just help us to have the faith, faith in prayer, and just faith in you. Bless this invitation now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor. Well, amen. Would you look here for just a minute? All right, those three things. Convicting. A pure heart. Is our heart pure? Certainly we need that for salvation, but even beyond that, we want to be pure. A good conscience. Is there anything between you and God? Nothing between my soul and the Savior. And then unfeigned faith. You know, if a preacher says, I'm preaching on faith, I feel like I need to hit the altar. Because <laughs> that's a weak area of all of us. And uh, God spoke to my heart. Let's stand, please, with our heads bowed and eyes closed. And Mrs. Cook's going to play an invitation. If you're not sure you're saved, we want to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. If God spoke to you, we invite you to come. If it's one of these areas, a pure heart, good conscience, your faith life in God, or maybe just another burden you like to cast upon the Lord.
Amen. You may be seated there for just a minute. Brother Nate, if you'll come back up here uh, for a second. Why don't you tell us how we can pray for you? Talk about faith and having to launch out by faith. Our church is... Uh, uh, our missions uh, money will send some to help Brother Nate, but maybe some, maybe one of you would like to chip in and help as well. But uh, here in just a few weeks, he's uh, going to be making a mission trip, and we're excited about that for him. And so I want you to tell us about it so we can pray for you. Well, um, like Pastor said, I'm going to get to take a missions trip, and that'll start on May 20th, and it'll go to May 31st. And I'm going to get to go to the country of Italy. And I am, I'm very excited about it. This will be my first ever missions trip and first time flying on a plane, too. So if you could pray for that, <laughs> that would be a blessing. Um, but I'm going to be over there with um, Brother Frank Maeta and his family, as well as the Childers. They'll be there over there as well. Their missionaries over there have been for many years. And I'm going to get to travel, actually, with the missions professor at our college at Ambassador, Dr. Ashley and his wife. And so I'm very thankful for that. I don't have to fly alone. Thank the, thank, thank the Lord. But, you know, I would really appreciate prayer, just that the Lord would do a great work over there. And just not only, you know, through, what we're minister, through our ministry over there, but also that the Lord would do a work in my own life as well. You know, I, I, I'm still seeking guidance as to what the Lord would happen to do. I know he's called me to preach, but as far as that's a missionary, a pastor, an evangelist, I really don't know. And, you know, one of my prayers is just that the Lord would use this missions trip to give me some guidance in that area. And also, most importantly, just to grow me closer to him and just to see the great need that's out there. We have a great need here, but there is a need all over the world. And just that the Lord would open up my eyes to the need of the lost the need for the gospel. Amen. And so please pray for those areas. And you know, uh, I do want to say there's a huge praise, actually. Um, so I was talking with my dad uh, this afternoon, actually. And so I sent out a few prayer letters just you know, asking people to pray about the, about the mission trip. I gave one to Pastor. And um, in there I asked you know, if, if people would prayerfully consider to you know, give, give a little bit of money. And it was such a blessing. My my, I was calling my dad, and um, he, he had mentioned before that people had, at the church had given money, and so, uh, so I was um, just, you know, asking him a little bit about it, and just how much is it, because, you know, I don't want to get too much, but, um, but he said it was $1,000, and that's, that's so much. That was such a blessing. That was totally unexpected, that's for sure. And so I just want to praise the Lord, because it's exactly... You know, what I needed when I needed it, and so I just praise the Lord for that. So, but if you will, just keep it in prayer. Keep keep me in prayer as you know, we go over there to Italy this this next month. Amen. Praise the Lord. And our church is gonna again already uh, um, support and help him as well. But maybe you like to do so individually. Um, you can just. Uh, Go by there and stuff some money in his pocket or something like that for over the next couple of weeks. Um, we used to, I lived in Pennsylvania and I went to Bible College in Tennessee. And so um, on the way back to Bible College, a lot of times we'd be in church on Sunday morning and then, uh, especially on certain weekends, and we'd try to get back or get down to Virginia to this church that my dad knew the pastor of. I, I grew up knowing this guy, his name was Brother Dan Hummel, and he had a church in Virginia. And so we would stop there Sunday night and then drive the rest of the way. And uh, my brothers and I, you know, Bible College. And so after the service, every time we would do so, and, and you're going to understand after we did this one time, I always stopped at that church because every time we went by there, the pastor would say, hey, these college guys, Bixler boys are in here. Come on to the front. And I want you all to shake hands and put some money in their pocket. Man, oh, man. <laughs> you're a poor Bible College student. Whoa, you know, hamburgers tonight, you know. And so, anyways, maybe you want to shake his hand and put a $10 bill or $20 bill or whatever the Lord lays on your heart if you don't have it tonight uh, over the next couple weeks here uh, before he finishes the semester. And But we definitely want to pray that God use him in a great way there in Italy. I'm going to have Brother Nate here at the front and uh, I'd like for you to come by and shake his hand. Didn't he do a great job? Amen. And, uh, you know, every church is one generation away from extinction, right? And every, and then you think about it as far as other churches too. 
I cannot tell you how many churches that I hear of on a consistent, I'll say monthly basis, that are in need of pastors. Just constantly. And I don't know what God's will is for him, but I'm just saying, man, we need preachers and we need pastors. And, uh, and our job as a church is we want to encourage them that have been called of God. And so Brother Nate's been called of God. And so I, I can just kind of see in my mind, uh, I can see there in the church at Lystra, uh, them having Timothy preach his first sermon and everyone in the church coming by and encouraging him or Titus as well. That, that's what we're to do. John Mark in the church of Jerusalem. And so we're so thankful to have these guys tonight, Brother Nate. So he's going to be up here. I want you to come by and uh, just encourage him. Father, we love you. Thank for the message tonight. Lord, help my faith. Lord, I feel like that father who said, help thou mine unbelief. Lord, as the disciples said, increase our faith. And we know faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, Lord, if we want our faith to increase, we've got to be more in your word. And as we read the stories and as we see your, your mighty power, it increases our faith. And so, Lord, help us to live by faith and not by sight. Father, thank you for this opportunity for Brother Nate to go to Italy. And, Lord, we're praying that you'd use him in a mighty way. Give him direction. Lord, I, I believe his heart surrendered. If you want him to be a missionary, make that clear to him. If you want him to be a pastor or whatever it is you want him to do, I pray that you would just make it clear for him. Lord, we know your, by, your word emphasizes more of doing the will of God than knowing the will of God. And as we do your will, then we will know your will. And so I pray that you'd help Brother Nate to do what he knows to do and to be faithful doing the will of God. And we pray that you direct his path from there. Father, thank you for the message tonight. Help us as a church family, Lord. We want to encourage uh, these young men that you have allowed us to be able to enjoy here in our church and help us to do a, a good job of that, not just tonight, but going forward. And we thank you, Lord, for the Wednesday night service. I pray that you would, uh, as we go home tonight, help us to have the joy of the Lord in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. But the name's going to be here at the front. Our visitors, thank you all for coming. Please, church, let them know we're so glad and honored that they were with us tonight. And uh, you're dismissed. Don't forget your kids next door.